So I want to revisit this topic of everyone needs to drink more water. I know last time I did a video on this, uh, stirred up a lot of um, opinions on this topic. So before you click off, just please hear me out. I will say right up front that I do drink water and I'm not against water. I drink about two and a half liters of water every single day. However, there's some really interesting information about water because you may think that water hydrates you. It actually doesn't. It could even dehydrate you. And I'm primarily talking about drinking excessive amounts of water. There's a term for this. It's called water intoxication or water poisoning or overhydration. Because if you think about it, how does this water get into your cells? Is it a passive thing? Does it just kind of go into your cells and start hydrating? No. There are very specific proteins that allow this water to go into your cells and with the help of electrolytes. And so what happens when you drink a lot of water without electrolytes, you can dilute the body's electrolytes, mainly sodium, but other electrolytes as well. And that condition is called hyponatremia. And here are the symptoms, headache, nausea, confusion, irritability, muscle cramping, as well as brain swelling. There's even a condition called EAH. That's a condition where the person is waterlogged, okay? And it's creating a lot of swelling in the brain. And that could easily come from just drinking too much water. And this often occurs when someone is exercising. And so this really pertains to athletes and people that exercise a lot, especially people that do marathons and they're drinking a lot of water. It could be quite dangerous. In fact, in the uh, Boston uh, Marathon, uh, 2005, at the end of the finish line, they actually detected 13% of everyone that crossed the finish line had this hyponatremia, which is basically a diluted fluid in your body where you don't have enough uh, sodium. Now, there's other things that also can cause hyponatremia other than just drinking too much water. It could be that you had diarrhea, vomiting. You're just sweating too much because think about it, like when you sweat, uh, it's really salty. And then also if you're drinking a lot of plain water without salt, you're just going to create a situation where you're going to actually be very deficient in salt. Just as a side note, one of the first symptoms of a salt or a sodium deficiency is uh, muscle weakness. Okay, you feel very, very weak. And this could easily occur if you're doing some type of sport or exercising and you just you feel like your your muscles are weaker and weaker. Well, obviously you need more salt. And some people that have these sport drinks uh, might not have enough salt or other electrolytes in them. Instead, they might have a few electrolytes and a lot of glucose, which by the way, can tie up a lot of these electrolytes, especially potassium. It kind of locks it up. There's another condition where a person is they have very weak adrenals, right? The adrenals are very, very weak, and that's called Addison's, and that person can't hold sodium. And so that person is very susceptible to having this hyponatremia situation. So people that have that condition need to consume a lot of salt uh, just to balance out the fluids. Now, also, when someone drinks alcohol, a lot of beer, you know, I remember one time I was in high school, and I drank a case of beer, which is very, very dangerous. And of course, I didn't drink any salt with that. So that created a major imbalance with my electrolytes. And my brain felt like it was going to explode. Because that's what happens when you actually have this hyponatremia is you get swelling in the brain. You also have those that have a hypothyroid condition. You have people that are on diuretics, which can really throw off your electrolytes because it's meant to get rid of this sodium. And the person is usually on a low sodium diet. You see, I really think there's more problems with uh, having low sodium than high sodium. And by the way, if you do consume a lot of sodium, you can always balance out that with more potassium. People who are salt sensitive are really potassium deficient. Infants are also susceptible to having this hyponatremia uh, situation. People who are on uh, SSRIs um, are susceptible as well. And diabetics are also susceptible to having this situation because of the different fluid electrolyte imbalances. And also uh, they have higher sugar and they're gonna be peeing out more fluid. And so they can easily be dehydrated. So drinking more water is not the only cause of this hyponatremia. If the person has diarrhea or is vomiting or is exercising and sweating all these salts out or is on certain medications that can be also creating a, a situation, you'd want to advise them to also add sodium and not go crazy with too much water. So if you're checked out on this video, check back in because this next thing I want to tell you is very, very important. 
there has been deaths uh, occurring from people drinking about six liters of water, okay, within a three-hour period. What is six liters of fluid? That is 1.5 gallons, okay? I mean, I'm sure you've known people who have drink, just guzzled a gallon of water in one sitting very quickly. Not smart. When I was in the military, um, we when I would march 17 miles, right, we'd drink a tremendous amount of water, but we'd also take salt with that. Typically now, uh, at least in the military, when you're training, uh, the most that you're supposed to drink per hour is 1 to 1.5 liters of fluid per hour. So you don't want to drink way too much fluid too fast, even if you're sweating. Now, of course, on the flip side, if you're susceptible to kidney stones, you should be drinking at least two and a half liters of fluid a day, even if you're not thirsty. But the point is you do want to pay attention to your thirst and drink when you're thirsty and not go crazy with too much. But I think two to two and a half liters of fluid is totally reasonable. And of course, if you're doing exercise or doing marathons, you really want to make sure you don't create this condition called hyponatremia, where you're just guzzling all this water um, with very little electrolytes. The last point I'm going to make, which is very important, if you're exercising and you're sweating and you're taking a regular electrolyte powder that's not necessarily meant for sports or exercise, you might want to either add more sodium to that electrolyte or use some type of sport hydration electrolyte with more sodium. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side. Now, I actually created another uh, very popular video on hydration. If you haven't seen this one, check it out.